Welcome back to Story Mode. It's 2017 and Nintendo are about to release their new console, the Nintendo Switch. But when I release a video one week prior to its release, Nintendo turn on me once again. Welcome to 2017, where there were four great movies. The first one, Wonder Woman. What the bloody hell is she playing at? The other one I didn't seem to mind was The Fate of the Furious, Fast and Furious number eight. But my two favorites were Train Spotting 2. Life. Choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone somewhere cares and the very underrated Wind River. You won't get the answers you're looking for, no matter what you find. Hi everyone, and welcome to a new Free Play Friday, and Happy New Year. Well, it's the first Free Play Friday for 2017, and I have to be honest, I'm feeling a little bit burnt out. Well, the last couple of weeks I have, Yes, it's the start of 2017 and I remember being so burnt out because I've just got given the Guinness Book of Records around a year ago and I had a lot of people coming to me wanting to sell me their collections. I had a guy who wanted to sell me his PC collection. He had over a thousand games and he wanted less than $800. I mean, that's less than a dollar a game. So I had to say yes and then it begins to be a numbers game. And I just don't want video games for the sake of them. I want to play them. And I have to be honest, I wasn't big into PC. And I was hoping this bundle of PC games would actually help me enter the world of PC. And thankfully, it did. Three, two, one, go! Now at the end of Free Play Friday, I played a video game once again. This time it was Seagarelli. Last time it was Commando on the Commodore 64. And I'm not too bad at Seagarelli. And the fans spoke up and they said, we want Free Play Friday to be about you playing games. So the next episode. Hi everyone and welcome to an all new Free Play Friday where all we do on Friday is play games. So now this is the new Free Play Friday where we play games and I decided to get Luke to play games with me because he's so good at video games, especially OutRun 2. I thought it's a great place to start. Joking, he can play the arcade better than me. He even beats my friends. So in the first episode, I tried to also make it look great for the audience. I had the screen up the top of Luke actually playing the game because in the past I've had a lot of doubters saying, how can a six year old play like that? And also tried to make it inviting, having our faces, our reactions, uh, me talking over while Luke's playing, talking about the game, about outrun information, but it just didn't seem to work. It's hard to believe he's six years old, honestly, but he has pretty much grown up with this game, so... Oh, I can't believe they gave you AAA! You went in the sand a couple of times. And it's still saving my points. Well, my Chris Moore. Love hearts. Yes, I'd have to say Luke was an absolute natural at OutRun 2 and video games in general. The next episode I decided to just have me playing and I was playing Street Fighter V. I'm such a big Street Fighter fan and I never really touched on Street Fighter V that much. I'd play it casually here and there but not really focused. And to my surprise I love the game. Not as much as Street Fighter IV but it was pretty good. At the end of the episode I decided to do something completely different and randomize what I play the following week. Here with the Free Play Friday Wheel of Fortune. And to tell us about the wheel, it's over to you, Jess. Thank you. Hi guys, so as you can see, we've got 14 consoles on the wheel. So what will happen is I'll spin the wheel and whatever console it lands on, that's the console Joel will have to play in next week's Free Play Friday. 
Okay, so that's the console. Now, who determines what game on that console? You guys do. Okay, so what yep. will happen is you guys will leave a comment or like other people's comments for, and suggest games that Joel should play next week. So whatever I guess tallies to the most, that's the game that he'll be he'll be playing. Okay. So if they pick say Lanes on Saturn and they pick Radiant Silver Gun, someone picks it and there's all these thumbs up or other people suggest it, we tally it up on the Monday and that's the game we do for the next Friday. Absolutely, that's exactly how it'll go. It sounded so good and I did play the games people suggested, but for some reason the views on these videos were extremely low. One video not even getting a thousand views over the span of a week. I'm joined with Luke who loves this game. He loves every game, doesn't he? Don't you Luke? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what have you been playing lately Luke, this week? Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8. Yeah, and how are you going with that? Good. The reason that he wants me to play him so I'm ready for my birthday, which is only two sleeps away. Yes, Luke was just about to turn seven, and for a seven year old, he leaves me for dead in video games. He can play almost any game, pick it up straight away, and he just wants to finish it to the end. Atari games are the same as Commodore 64 games. But I use this well. No, they're completely different. Week after week, Luke and I kept hammering out Free Play Friday, playing Typing of the Dead, Metal Slug, and so many more. In the meantime, Nintendo have announced their Nintendo Switch, their new console, and I have to say, when I first saw the trailer for the Nintendo Switch, I was very disappointed. I didn't want another portable console. I wanted a console that was kind of powerful, that would keep up with a PS4 or even an Xbox One. Well, I thought I needed to get one instead of judging it from this trailer. Now, at this time, I had a lot of companies send me video games and even consoles. Xbox, Sony, Ubisoft, Square Enix. Everyone was sending me video games to review. I didn't have to review them, but they were there to review them if I liked. And I really liked that about those companies, and I knew Nintendo were very different. But nevertheless, I decided to call Nintendo Australia to see if I could get a Switch slightly earlier. At the start, they were fairly nice. They sent me an email outlining what I have to say about the Switch and only talking about the box. This was part of the embargo or agreement. See, I wasn't allowed to show the Switch online. I was only allowed to unbox it and show the console. I couldn't actually show the graphics or play a game or anything like that. And then when I read the embargo, I have to talk favorably about the Switch. I have to talk about how the box looks awesome and compact. There was so much there that there's no room for my opinion. And I did not like this. When I questioned Nintendo, they said, don't worry, we're not sending you a Switch now. So I went down another avenue, my contact in Japan. In the meantime, I saw a lot of unboxing videos on YouTube and it made me cringe because all I could see was Nintendo's words. The Switch box? This? Wow. It's not that big. It's not that big. And it's, it's lovely. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. Look at I'll, that thing. I'll see you later. That is something to covet wow. right there, isn't it? Now, pretty much every YouTuber who got a Switch uploaded their video on the 23rd of February. Right now. Look how small this is. That's great packaging. It's really good packaging. I, I wanna see. Mm. Sweet, beautiful Switch. Look how cute this little tiny cartridge is. Because everything's so small. It is so the, small. The, the games are small, don't you, so light too. You, packaging is as sleek as your console, um, but the Switch is never going back in there. It feels pretty solid. It's a nice substantial feel. It's, it yeah. is uh, how this sort of stands up to some abuse. I mean, it feels robust, right? Like feel, yeah. the, that feel means, the half this of that. This is so... I just I can't say it enough how yeah. beautiful this is. It's so sleek, right? It's so sleek. Yes. It's like it's so little. It's like the size of an SD card. That is beautiful. Look how small that is. That is beautiful. Everything is small with this machine. Unfortunately, my Nintendo Switch got delayed in customs, and I will get my Nintendo Switch on the 26th of February, still around a week earlier from its release. Coincidentally, I also got another Switch from an Australian contact. This was a local Switch made for the Australian market and I also got the very, very rare Zelda Collector's Edition, which no one 
absolutely no one had seen before. Now having it so early I knew I might have to ask Nintendo for permission if I uploaded a video on it. So I verbally rang Nintendo of Australia and let them know I already had a Switch and a limited edition Zelda Breath of the Wild. The lady on the phone laughed and said it's impossible for you to have a Switch let alone Breath of the Wild. It's under heavy duty security and I'm bluffing and go ahead and put it online because you don't have one. So I made this video on the 24th of February. Hi, this is Joel from Last Gamer. This is a short message to get you to tune in on Wednesday for an exclusive look with many surprises at the Nintendo Switch. That's right, we're gonna have special guests, many surprises that will never be seen. So tune in then Wednesday. Now I had a lot of people calling me out saying that I won't be able to get the Switch before street date and saying that I'm just creating fake news. But two days later, on the 26th of February, 2017, I showed this video that made Nintendo go into meltdown. On this episode of The Last Gamer Show, we have an exclusive sneak peek at the Nintendo Switch and Joel gives his final conclusion. Now I have to say this was a very rushed review. You see, we got the Switch on the 25th of February, technically. It came late at night. I stayed up all night playing with the Switch, getting used to it. And then in the morning, Jess and I had to rush the review to quickly get it online. Now I've already opened the Japanese version. You can open this version. Seem I've already done an unboxing a while ago. Awesome. Now what I'm talking about there is I actually unboxed the Japanese version of the Nintendo Switch on Facebook some two days before this. And what happened to that post? Nintendo took it down. How do they have this power? The screen part, we're gonna click it inside the dock and then you can hear a click. Again, it's not as clicky as you might think, like a real clicky sound. It, no. It just fits in there. And um, to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of movement you probably hear that. Yep. There's still a lot of movement, not that you're going to be doing that when it's docked, but there is a lot of movement between the screen and the dock itself. So, I wasn't fabricating anything or exaggerating. I did think the Nintendo Switch was a bit sloppy in the dock. But then we had problems with the Joy-Con and removing the sides. I want you to try and take that off. Okay. You can obviously see lock. Struggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's not as clear cut as you'd think. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, very... That's pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not as easy as you'd think. It's just no. this locking mechanism that makes things quite hard. Yeah. Now, I didn't get around to finding out what that fault was or why it was like that or how many other switches have it, but from the first impression, it was not great. But here's something that no one was doing online, actually playing a Nintendo Switch, showing the screen. Actually screen capture this until you get past this so we can dock it. So we'll just go English, the Americans, Europe, Australia, and Japan, well, obviously Australia. So how does it feel using that being nah, so small? Silly, it's, it's silly. <laughs> what I was talking about there is using the Joy-Con to just enter my name and like moving it around on screen. I just couldn't get used to that Joy-Con by itself. It's just way too small. And still to this day, I just, I just can't get used to it. That's just me. So we continued the review and talked about Legend of Zelda, the Breath of the Wild. And well, it was a good game. It didn't excite me as much as I hoped. Now I'm not going to blame just one game and I know it's an amazing game. It's huge, it's a, it's a long awaited. But I was wanting other things like Mario Odyssey, which wasn't out at the time. Now, I didn't want people to think I was negative towards the Switch because Nintendo shafted me. So I got on my friend Audridge, who's a massive Nintendo fanatic, and get his opinion on the Switch. Hey guys, back again. Joined with Audridge, longtime friend hey. of Joel. Hey Jess, how are you? Hey, good, thank you. So you've had some time with the Switch now, about an hour or so. Mm -hmm. What are your first impressions? Well, my first impressions are like, you know, the console, it's okay, the design is okay, but, um, you know, it leaves like 
the Joy Cons are like a bit bit flimsy. It feels like, you know, I can um, they'll come out at any any moment. Yeah, but I I agree. So like even being a girl myself, I just feel like I can snap this. It does feel very delicate. Mm. And according to Nintendo's embargo, we actually had to say it was robust, even though we felt it was delicate. Now, who knows? It might be robust but it didn't feel it to us i mean these things the joysticks are okay but the buttons like are really you know like too small they are yeah even for my fingers i've got long nails myself too so i feel i'm kind of struggling to mm. <laughs> reach everything so and it, it is yeah as i said it is quite long so and then like going on about like the specs i mean i quickly had a look at the specs um you know, it's, it reminds me of like a PSP or a um, PSP Vita. Yeah. Um, and I mean, look, looking at the, gra I'm not like, I'm looking at Zelda here and it's like, I'm not, you know, very keen on the, um, the cell shading. Now you may not agree with Aldridge about the cell shading, but guess what? That's his opinion. And that's something that should exist. Our opinions not being told what to say and when to say it. So the final part of the review, I gave my conclusion on what I think about the Nintendo Switch. Keep in mind, this is approximately a week before its street date release. A lot of people out there might think I'm biased to the Xbox or even PlayStation 4. However, it's quite opposite. If any bias, it's to Nintendo. But this Switch is not getting my vote. I'll start with the controller itself. I keep seeing online how sturdy it is and how stable. But as Audridge was saying, it's very flimsy. If I just put it there, you can see it's, it's just not doing it for me. As you can see, there's quite a lot of flex and there's a bit of a rubbing noise. Keep in mind, this is a brand spanking new switch. The left one's no better. Speaking of the left Joy-Con, I've had it disconnect three times in a span of two and a half hours. Now apparently this was an issue on launch and Nintendo rectified this problem. But I was just speaking the truth and I had a lot of people comment on this video saying I'm a Nintendo hater and I just wanted to hate on the console. But I really tried to keep an open mind even though it may not look like it. It's identical to a Wii U controller. There's a Wii U controller and there's the Switch controller. I don't know if you can see that. I'll switch this Wii on, or the Wii U, I should say. So regardless of the history between Nintendo and I, I kept an open mind and I just didn't love the Switch. I love the Wii U. I even liked the Wii. But this Switch didn't do it for me. And what happened when I uploaded the video? I got not only a lot of hate from Nintendo fans, but I got a copyright strike from Nintendo themselves. In fact, not just on this video, but on every single video I had uploaded on YouTube. Majority of them got removed. Some of them stayed on and Nintendo would collect the revenue. And I had to go through every single video and explain to YouTube why this shouldn't be copyright. They stopped the Switch video within 11 hours because they say I obtained the Switch illegally. They took off other videos for using their soundtracks. And they even put a copyright on a video for having a Mario t-shirt and having the last game of Fond above it. How ridiculous. I had to explain to all my supporters out there on Facebook that most of my videos have been removed from YouTube. The ones I could salvage, I had to explain that Nintendo had no authority over them. And YouTube saw the right way and put them back up. I then put a video up on YouTube explaining Nintendo took my videos down due to copyright. And guess what? Nintendo took that video down. It got that ridiculous. Someone put a petition up to help me stop Nintendo from false flagging my videos. Yes, Nintendo and I don't have the best relationship. They didn't like me importing Super Famicom games in 1991. Nor did they like me importing GameCube games back in 2003. And they didn't like me using soundtracks of their old games in my videos. Nor did they like me having Mario on my t-shirt. But Nintendo, I am the supporter. It's just you're the dictator. Asobi
覚えさせるぞ「せがたさんしろせがたさんしろせがさんたんしろ」カラオケナンパにクラブ他にすることあるだろうが触れなきゃ遊べ。